Hello everyone, welcome back. Today is our last web design lesson, which is a bit sad. However, I'm sure you're excited to finish up your websites. And although today's lesson title says we are going to be doing intermediate JavaScript, we're actually going to be really combining all three languages we learned over these past four weeks. So that means HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And during this lesson, we're gonna finish up our websites first, and we're gonna create an image carousel. We're gonna code one, and I'm gonna show you what that is in just a second. And this image carousel is gonna combine HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to create a cool slideshow of images on your website. So for our objectives, we're gonna be working with the DOM today, the document object model. We touched a little bit on this last week where we started selecting elements and turning them into JavaScript variables. And we're gonna dive into that again. And we're gonna create this image carousel. So I have this website here that has an example image carousel. And as you can see, it's right here in the front. And if you click on these arrows, It'll actually move you to the next image or video. In this case, they have some video, I think, playing. And as we click this button, I know you can't see my mouse, but I am clicking this, this white arrow to the right of the screen. And when we click that, we move on to the next image. So that's what we're going to create. Ours is not going to have these fancy transitions like this wipe effect, but you can definitely go in and add that. Um, you can look up how to do that and if you have any questions about that feel free to ask me but today we're just going to create a very basic slideshow for our website so let's begin I'm going to go to glitch.com so you can log into your account and I'm going to resume coding make sure you select your website so right now i'm going to show my website in a new window so this is so far what i have for my website and the first thing we're going to do is actually jump into the javascript all right so for this image slideshow we're going to need the images the uh, image address for each of the images we want in our slideshow so to do that, all you have to do is, I don't know, look up whatever your website's topic is about, go to images, and then what you wanna do is, I already have this image here, but what you wanna do is right click it, or click with two fingers, and you wanna go to copy image address. And then once you have that copied, you wanna go back to your code and just like I have here, I put these little slash slash marks and that's to notify um, the code editor that this is a comment. And then what you want to and then what you want to do is paste that link right after the slash slash in the beginning. So you're going to paste that in either do command V control V or you can right click again and click paste. And I want you to find three or four images that you want to use in this image carousel. So I'm going to give you a minute to do that. All right, so if you need a little more time to collect those images, feel free to pause this video, but I'm gonna start moving on and creating a way to store these images. So 
I'm going to actually store these images in what's called an array. And I know we touched a little bit on this in the, um, in the intro to JavaScript video, but um, today we're actually going to be using it a lot. And basically an array is a variable type. So it's like a number or a string, but it's called an array. And what it basically does, it allows us to group multiple values inside a single variable. So the way I create an, an array is by the same way I create a normal variable. So I'm going to say let, and I'm going to call this array images because I want to group all these image addresses together. And then I'm going to set that equal to these brackets here. And these brackets tell the JavaScript that we're making an array. Now inside of these brackets, I want to put quotations. And then what I want to do is copy and paste these URLs into this array. So I'm going to paste that in there. And then to separate these values, so this whole quotation mark uh, image address is one element of the array, I can separate it from the next one that I'm going to paste in by putting a comma. And then I'm just going to press enter to give me some space so it doesn't go all the way off the page. But next, I'm going to copy and paste this, this second URL in. So put those quotation marks and paste that in there. And then again, I'm going to use my comma to separate those elements and copy and paste the last one in with quotations. And I'm also going to put that on a new line. And then don't forget your semicolon at the end. So right now, we have this variable called let images, and we set it equal to a bunch of these three image URLs. So I'm first going to talk a little bit about arrays because we need to know uh, how their indexes work and how we utilize them before we can start coding the actual carousel. All right, so as I said before, each of these um, URLs is a element of the array. So we have one element, two elements, three elements, and we can actually get the length of the array. So the length of the array is going to be the number of elements it has. So we can console.log images dot length. And if we go back to our website and we right click and click and click inspect, and we go to our console area, we can see that we get the number three. And that's because we have three elements in this array. Now, arrays also have indexes. And this is the way we call certain elements of the array. So for example, let's say I wanted to get this index or this element here. I wanted to get this image address. What I could do is actually access it by using the index of it in the array. So the way I do this is by doing images and then I put these brackets and then inside of these brackets, I want to put the index of the element that I want to access. So you may be thinking, well, if this is the first element of the array, then it's probably the first index. Well, the thing with arrays is that they actually start for the indexes, at least they start at zero. So really this URL here would be the zeroth index. This would be the first index. Oh, this would be the first index. And this last one would be the second index. So I can access this first element by doing images zero, because that is the zeroth index. So when I console.log that, I should get this URL here, which is indeed the first URL. Subsequently, if I put one here, then I'm going to get this new URL, which is the second one. And if I put two, I'll get the last one. Now, if I try to put three, it's going to give me undefined because there's actually no third index of the array. For there to be a third index, there would have to be four elements. But in this case, there's only three elements. So that's kind of the idea with arrays. Now let's get started with connecting our HTML elements with our JavaScript. So I'm just going to delete this console.log. And um, 
I forgot to mention, but you've probably noticed by now, the JavaScript we wrote in here for the last video, I want you to uh, just delete that because we're going to start new. I mean, if you have anything that you've done with the JavaScript, other features, then you're probably going to want to keep that. But last video, I was just sort of demonstrating some of the capabilities so you can delete that and create this and type this stuff in. But with your images, so what I want to do is go to my index.html and I want to go to the place where I want my image slideshow to exist. So I'm going to exit out of here and I want my image slideshow to actually be this image here. And then I want a button below it saying or having an arrow. And then when I click the arrow, it's going to move on to the next image. So I have to access this image element here and we actually created this in the first video. So if I go back to my HTML, I can see that I have this image tag here, which represents the image in our HTML or on our website. We see that it has an ID called first image. So that's actually really good for us because that makes it really easy for us to access this element. So we want to select this element in our JavaScript using this ID of first image. Now, if you don't have an image on your website, you're probably going to want to put one there. Um, you can set the source as the first, the first uh, image you have. So go ahead and do that. Do I have it set as the first image? Um, maybe. <laughs> so anyway, we're going to remember this ID of first image. Make sure to give your image element a specific ID. So we're going to go back to our script.js and let's create a variable called um, carousel carousel element. So we're going to say let carousel element and we will give ourselves a little bit of space and we'll set that equal to document dot get element by ID. And then we're going to put these parentheses and in. inside of here, we're going to put our quotations and the name of that ID we gave our image element. So mine was first image, yours may be something different or it could be the same. So the thing with this is you got to make sure that all the capitalization is correct, especially with this get element by ID. A lot of times people, uh, put an uppercase D there and that will not work. So if you're running into a problem, it may be because your um, capitalization is a little bit of off, is a little bit off. So just go ahead and check that. So now that we selected this image carousel element, we can begin to create a function that allows us to switch the images. So the reason we want to create a function for this is because we're going to call this function uh, many times when we click a button. For right now, we're not going to worry about that button yet, but we will code it in this video. But for now, we're just going to create that function. So what I can do is put this function. That's how we create a function. So we say function and then we name the function. So I'm going to name it switch images and then I'm going to put these parentheses and I'm not going to include any parameters. I could, but it just seems easier to leave it without parameters. Now, before I dive into the code here, I want to create a sort of variable that allows us to go through each of the elements in this array. So I'm going to create a variable and I'm going to call it counter. So below this let carousel element, I'm going to say let counter equals zero. So, and make sure to define this outside of the function because we want it to, we want to be able to access this variable everywhere. So you're going to set that counter equal to zero. All right, so let's move to inside this function. Basically what I want to do inside this function is get the next image in line for this counter element. So let's say I was displaying the first image. When I run the function switch images, 
I want it to display the second image. So I want to get that next image. And the way we can do that is by creating a variable. We can say let next image. And we're going to set that equal to images, which is this array. And then we'll put these brackets and we'll say this next image is equal to the counter variable of the array. So the counter index of the array. So let's say we just had zero here. We're going to say next image, next image is equal to images and then our counter, which is zero. So this is really images zero, which is really this first element here. The next thing we want to do is access our carousel element. So we want to access this carousel element and we actually want to change a attribute of this element. When we go back to our index.html and go to our images, oh, our image element right here, we see that it has multiple attributes. It has an ID, it has a source, the height, the width. We want to access this source variable because this is what is um, loading our image or defining the image that we use. So if we go back, we can say carousel element dot src, which stands for source, and we're going to set that equal to the next image. Next image. So our source of the image is going to be replaced with the next URL, which we set as a variable here. And the last thing we want to do before we move on is set counter equal to counter plus one. So this is going to increase the counter by one. So it's basically the same thing as um, moving to the next image. So, so this function is going to run first when the window loads so that we have an image to display in there. So when the window loads, it's going to display the zeroth index of the array. So this first image here. And then when we click this button again, it's going to, so once it runs the zero th index of the array, it's going to increase by one. And then when we run this function again, it's going to set the next image as, the next image as images one. So we're going to be displaying this image right here. Now, the thing is what happens when we get when our counter becomes three. So there is no third index of this array. There's three elements, but there's no third index. Remember, this is the zeroth index, the first index, and then the second index. We don't have a third index. So basically, in the beginning of our function, once we hit the index of three, we want to stop and go back to index two. So basically, we want to loop back and display this first URL. So what we can do is add an if statement and we say if counter is equal to three, I'm going to use triple equal signs. Then we can set counter back to zero. And then we can continue with our process of going to the next image. All right. so. Now we got to figure out how we want to call this image. Well, we first want to call it when our window loads. So right here we can do window dot on load and we're going to set that equal to the switch images function. So we can say window dot on load equals switch images. So that's going to so every time I reload this page, it's going to run that code. And I also want to create a button for this slideshow that allows me to click it and then run this function whenever this button is clicked. So the way I can do that is first we actually have to create the button in the index.html. So I'm going to create it right below this image element here. And I'm actually going to create a div first. And inside of this div, I'm going to put an h3. And in this case, I'm just going to use this simple um, 
the dash dash arrow sign. It's it should load. Uh, it may be the styling from the other things, but I'm gonna create this button here, and we're gonna style this button so we can actually see it on the page. So what I'm gonna do is go here, and and I'm gonna select that div element. I'm gonna give it a background color of blue just so we can see it. All right, so yeah, it's right there. And I'm going to, we can see that it's all the way across the screen. So this means we gotta change the margins. So we can set our margin dash left to 45%. And then our margin dash right to 45% as well. So now it looks like this. We're also going to give it some padding, so we'll say padding is equal to 10 pixels. When we do that, we get this. We're also going to give it a border radius equal to, oh, sorry, with the three pixels. So this is going to kind of round our borders. And then you can't see the text in here because I'm pretty sure it's blue. So what we can do is select our H3, which contains the text. And the way we can do that is by doing div and then H3, because we only want to select the H3s that are inside of divs. For example, this div here and this H3, this H3 is clearly inside the div. So we can select it like that instead of selecting all H3s. Just make sure that none of the styles conflict from our other H3s. And we can say color is equal to white. So when I do that, I get this, and then I kind of want to align this in the center. So text, align, and then center. So now I have this cool looking button here. I mean, it's not the best button, but it still works. So now I have to go back to my JavaScript and select this button. So before I do that, actually, I want to go back to my index.html and give this div an ID so it's easier to select. So I'm going to say ID is equal to button. And then if I go to my script.js, right under this let carousel element equal, I'm going to say let button or let's call it carousel button equal to document dot get element by ID. And then we'll put our ID, which was button. All right, so now we selected our button. And the last thing we need to do is call this function, this switch images function, when this button is clicked. So I can do that by doing carousel. Make sure you do this under window.load. You can do carousel button dot on click. And we're going to set that equal to switch images. It's very similar to this window dot on load function, but we just replace that with the carousel button dot on click. So when we do that, Thing should work and yes it does work we get this so you got to trust me that I'm clicking this button here because you can't see my mouse but every time we click we get a new image and once it gets to this last image it loops back to the beginning and we could see click how fast see how fast we can click and I know this is not a smooth transition here from one image to the next but Feel free to email me if you want to know, or if you want to learn how to add that. But here's our website. Uh, it's, it's definitely not the greatest website because I was kind of just showing you how to add elements and stuff and the basic fundamentals, so I didn't really have time to make it that great. But hopefully yours is a little better than this website. And now you can say 
that you've learned three coding languages, you know HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, definitely show this website to your friends and family. They'll be impressed, especially if you tell them that you coded it. And I'm also happy to look at your website. If you want to email me the link to your website, I'm pretty sure if you go back to Glitch and go to Project Options, you can... I'm pretty sure you can just copy this link here and anyone that um, types in this link can see your website. So, oh, you can go to share here. Um, you can do go to live app and then you want to copy this and let's see. Yeah, it's just going to give you that website here. So, feel free to um, send me the link to your websites and I'll be happy to take a look at them. I want to see what you guys did over this uh, workshop and don't be shy about this. I know it's if you don't think your web website's that great, it's uh, it's probably very good, especially if you're a beginner. Um, it's good to show off your work because this was it was a lot of work and it took a lot of time. So be proud of it. Show your family and friends and email me the links to your website. So I wanted to just thank all of you who have uh, attended any of my lessons for this web design workshop. I want to thank all the people that helped me get this workshop started and running and all the participants, especially those who have stayed to the end and um, watched every one of my videos. You guys are really going to have a head start when you get into high school or even college and you want to go into computer science maybe maybe you don't know that yet but when you go into high school and maybe you, you're going to take a computer science class this stuff is definitely going to help you out a lot if you know these three languages i mean this year my sophomore year of high school i actually learned all this or most of it i learned html CSS and JavaScript this year. So if you're in elementary school, middle school, high school, that's really impressive that you learned a sophomore year course or you learned part of a sophomore year course in this workshop. So just be really proud of yourself and give yourself a little bit of break from coding. We've been coding a lot and it's always good to relax your brain a little bit because coding is it requires a lot of thinking and again email me to make sh to um, check if you have any questions and I would love to hear from you if you want me to do a another workshop if you want me to continue with this workshop or maybe do a Python workshop or a workshop of a different language whatever you recommend I am open to doing so stay safe guys Hope you had a great time during this web design workshop. I sure did. And thanks for watching.